Hello and welcome, my name is Interwash and in this video uh, what I'll be doing today is just doing a track breakdown of my song Elsewhere, which is released on the Abandonware compilation by Full Flex Audio. Go check it out. Uh, without further ado, let's head into the project. I will say first though, it's quite unstructured. Um, and so if I do get lost at certain points, just bear with me. Righty, let's head on in. So how got the project organized is it just have my main channels, you know, sidechain, kick, snare, drums and stuff at the first. Then it goes into our synths, which does include the main bass. Basses at this point is just sub and I think a few backing tracks. Uh, we've got effects and vocals and a whole load of automation. One of the first things that we hear in this is the sort of uh, pulsing if quarter note. And what that is, it is just the main base of the track elsewhere. Um, just through, like, stretched out, I believe, and then through a few filters. So, switching to my mixer that I have here. Yeah, sorry, it's this track here. I keep forgetting I got pushed to talk on, so bear with me. So the things it does have on it is just, I believe, a low pass uh, through 3D, par 3D parametric EQ, oh, sorry, band pass, and then spectral pan, which is something quite interesting. It's basically a pan throughout the frequency spectrum, so through different frequencies you'll have a different left and right, which is quite cool, and I think of this it's automated, like a dynamic EQ, and it's kind of just pulsing between left and right, but through only a very specific frequency area. So it gives it a good fluctuation, but it's not the entire so uh, sound going left to right. Now, you may notice an absurd amount of samples and uh, criticize me all you will. It's a great place to draw inspiration from, and this is a no greater, or what is it, exhibit A of that. So there was the a piano loop which I very love, very much loved the progression of and just the tonality of it, its sort of timbre and emotions that it gave. That and I'll play that sample right now. It gave me almost uh, Silent Hill vibes. I'm not sure if it's uh, Promise or the main song. I believe it's Promise from the original soundtrack of uh, Silent Hill 2. It just had like that very ominous sort of vibe to it, but still a somber mood, like as if something was lost, you know, elsewhere. Um, and I basically transcribed the, the MIDI or the notes for that into another synth. And all that is, is a FL plugin called Flex, running through, not the default patch, but there is um, one that's through the first set that you'll actually get, and it's a, it's a very nice sound, like an almost, uh, you know, 80s synth wave sort of stuff like that. apologize um but yes so that was basically how that sort of progression came about drawing inspiration from those piano loops and they're not exactly prevalent they do add a backing to that noise later in the song but i i really love the way i drew it out with that sort of retro synth in this There is also uh, just basic effects in the background, you know, um, I believe it's like birds chirping and such. It just does give it that sort of feel of an atmosphere, as most people do have in more slower, somber, lo-fi and tra uh, tracks like that. Now, after the first eight bars, uh, that's when the piano backing comes in, but also the vocals. <laughs> 
again, just a, uh, I believe they're, most of these samples are from Splice. Uh, great place to find stuff. And this one doesn't seem to have any particular processing on it, so that's pretty much stock. <laughs> Which, uh, it's just the end of this larger sample here. <laughs> Again, I have no shame in using these. Um, if you got a problem, fight me. Buy a ticket to Australia. Um, it, I, th I believe heavily in using samples to create a greater product. I think having them as your outright focus in something, that's why main synths and stuff are all my crew, uh, design and such. But when you do find yourself in lack of a better soundscape, I don't think anyone should be damned for using something like this outright when it is, that's its purpose to live. Now this here, you may be wondering what, what in the hell is like all that, but that's just the Foley and it's just a collection of different hits and samples. Now one of my favorite tricks, and this works for vocals, it works for drums, it works for basses, almost anything, I would not do it on a sub, but a way I like to take away transients and give something almost a thwack into it because all of these Foley samples actually have uh, they they have quite a harsh transient. Uh, let me just solo the effect. So like having that by itself with everything else going on, it, it wouldn't really suit the mood and the timbre of how the track is progressing. And my favorite tip is. Putting a melder auto pitch on something. So this is it here. Uh, without the auto pitch, so I had everything turned off previously, but if I just turn off the auto pitch, you still have those harsh beginnings to the samples, but I changed the format quite a bit in this because I did want it to sound deeper, but moving the format just the slightest amount takes away from the transients of a sound and it really just gives it a sort of lead in so let's listen to it with on so off and then i'll turn it on and it just sort of gives it that little thwack into the into the body of the sound You can see even just at the slightest amount of formant shifting, it makes a difference. So this is off and on. So that's a nice touch I like to give to a lot of my sounds just to sort of not have a harsh beginning to them. So now we're reaching the part where you do hear the main sound draw in and everything else sort of sort of fades into this not a wall of sound but it just degrades into the, like a drone into the fire into the build up which it doesn't really have a build this song there's no drums really leading into it but it is just this sort of gradual uh combination of everything leading into it <laughs> So let's begin to go through this. Um, I'll start with the synths. I feel like that's something most people want to learn about right away uh, compared to drums and other stuff going on. So I'll begin with just the main melody that's happening, which is just this right here, synth one. And this also shares the exact same uh, auto ch auto pitch uh, trick that I just previously showed. But I'll go through the patch of this one, and you might be surprised that it's pretty close to an init patch, I'm pretty sure. 
Okay, no, I'm completely wrong. It's not in a patch. And it's also in my horrible skin. You won't be able to read any of the text. I forgive my... I don't forgive myself. <laughs> So if I was to go through this, I'm pretty sure, yeah, so it's just like a sawtooth square wave with a low pass filter going over it. Uh, let me take off all the effects so it's just the bare, the serum by itself. So uh, yeah, quite a massive difference and that's something I've come to find about myself is I do almost all of my noises in post. The base patches will be far, very awry from my end result. And this is case in point, pretty much for that. Now I can kind of read that, it says pluck square pluck. So I believe it's just a basic preset, but I've messed with the attack and the sort of, uh, I believe some aspects of it just to get the sort of timbre that I want initially. So that's what I mean, this is a very basic sound anyone would have access to and through processing, which I'll just switch to my mixer screen to show that. So this runs across three different tracks, I'm pretty sure, 5, 14 to 16, and I'm sorry, the, set, the arrangement view is very organized, but my mixer is not, so I apologize for that. But initially it runs through this, and basically the chain that I have begins with a lo-fi filter, and then into an auto pitch. Sorry, no, it doesn't. That's turned off for a reason. <laughs> so, lo-fi filter on, on Fruity Effector. And then running through two OTTs, they are on full. Through a Maximus using the Clear Master, basically, um. OTT takes out a lot of the mids, it gives it a harmon curve to your stuff, you know, a lot of bass, a lot of highs. Um, Maximus does a good job of bringing that back up in one of their presets. The Feuding Parametric EQ is just cutting lows at this point. Uh, Vocodex is not on, it's just there for no reason. The Convolver. So, another aspect of my sound design I think that's quite prevalent is the space I try to give with Convolution Reverb. And I've found that I've used it a lot more than Ordinary Reverb. It does give a much broader lifelike sound to something. And I think there's a lot better articulation you can have messing with real reverb compared to a digital reverb. So I'll try that with on and off. And it just adds that little bit more body to the sound which it's enough to just give it more space, more width, without actually changing the sound itself. And it, I know this you can, you can do this normal reverb, but it's just not the same. Now the next page it goes into is what has the auto pitch by Melda trick. So it's been formatting down, I believe. And yes, just looking at it, it's uh, formatted down 12 semitones or one octave all the way, but again, you can tell right away if I take it off. There's a lot of transies like sharp hits on the synth. And now with, with it on, it just gets rid of them and I find like it's a nice way to just ease the sound in. Uh, the next two EQs are just a bunch of bull crap, to be honest. Uh, I think it's just e leveling out stuff. Dimension Expander, I'm not too heavy on it because it does bring in phasing issues every now and then, which is why I do have an Ozone right after it to just make sure that the left to right of the stereo is in good shape. And to finish it off, Wave Shaper and vo uh, Soft Clipper, just to bring those volumes that I sort of lost throughout all the processing back up to the top. And that makes the main melody sound of Elsewhere. This is just the MIDI for it, nothing too complex. Underneath it I do have a pluck I believe of some sorts.
Yeah, so it's it's straight up just a pluck doing not much at all. Uh, and on the main synth, I do have a reverb swell coming in and out, just uh, bringing energy back into it. Something is off. Ah, there it is. So yeah, just on those sort of uh, beats leading into the snare, it does have that sort of pull back into the flow. Now, down here in the basses, I have some stuff going on. I'm not sure if these are samples from another song, so I may not be able to show you the processing of these, uh, but I do find them quite interesting. Yeah, so it's quite a... It does have resonant frequencies, but it's quite atonal. It's just really like an attack. And again, this follows the exact same formula with the auto pitch. Um, and I'll swap to my mixing screen just to show you that. So again, it's just sort of taken away from the attack. You're probably going to hate me for how much I push that, but honestly, it's, it's changed my life. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the sample. Actually, no, so it's pitched down. Let me actually drag that and show you what the original is with the pitch up. Yeah, so it almost just sounds like a percussion, like a little foley or something like that, and anyone could really do that. So then through all the processing, which is... um, Just so if I pitch it back down give it that deeper tones, and then go through my effects, which is, yeah, an auto pitch, something to bring up the resonant frequencies. Basically, that parametric EQ just has three peaks on the keys of the track, like the root note, and I think a seventh and a ninth. Um, a maximus to then, again, bring up stuff that I lose within the form of shifting. Auto pitch, two ITTs, another maximus, again, to bring up what's lost. The preset I usually always use on a Maximus is the Clear Master RMT or something like that. Um, it's a great way of just bringing up lost frequencies and maximizing the loudness. Then into another parametric EQ, which is just cutting lows. Imager to make sure the stereo is right. And it goes into the next track, which I'm sure again is just cutting out certain frequencies and stuff. Nothing crazy. But in the end, it does make that sort of attack sound that, which is prevalent in the track. And the one underneath it, I believe, is the exact same, just with notes being played through MIDI rather than just the sample itself. And that one's got a little bit different processing, but it comes from the exact same sample, just being ran as a one shot instead of the loop. Uh, for the sub... It's quite heavy on the noise, I must be honest. Um, but, you know, the drill with that, I'm sure everyone's got a sub like this. Just, um, It's based off the virtual right preset, which has the two overtones. You've got the octave up and octave and a seventh. Um, but it does have some different changes to the wave tables and the distortion as well as white noise on top and it's just soft clipped at the end. In the drop I do have some vocals running and this is just um, some chops from the initial uh, eh, from the initial vocal loop that I played. <laughs> So they're in there, they're prevalent, but they just had this sort of backing, they're not overpowering really. Uh, there seems to be a vocal I missed, let me just check that. That's actually me, <laughs> doing um, na 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 something in like, within range of the vocal chop that's there. So look, I do try to add on top of samples I use. And that basically goes on for those two sections. Um, oh. 
So then basically we have this sort of break into the B section of the first drop. And that's using all the pre-established sounds just in a different format. Um, and then coming into the last section of the B section. Again, it's just the first initial synth running on a different sort of um, tangent to the melody. One thing I might just quickly go through is drums. I know they're not a big point of interest for most people, but I might as well. This is a track breakdown. So a lot of the kicks and snares I've been using lately are more trap orientated. Um, I believe the kick is from a decap pack on Splice, but this snare, I'm not too certain, so we'll have a look into that. Yeah, it's quite an odd snare, I must say. And I'm running two variations, it seems. Look, I don't even know my own project. Who am I? So there are two snares. Um, they're at a slight offset to each other. So one's basically creating the transient and the hit, and the other's giving it a vowel or a body. So this one here is the transient. And this one here, I'm pretty sure it's just like a metal clang. Yeah, so not much to it, but when you do add the two together, you get a nice, well-rounded snare. Now this snare does have processing on it, but it's mainly just bringing up volume. This is without. And this is with. So nothing special going on there really with those. All right, and now into probably the part I'm most excited for really because it's uh, featuring my voice. Uh, if I can work out what I did to mute everything. Here we go. into it so yeah first to start off um i did have the track completed but it, if it was felt like i was lacking something um and at this point i was getting really comfortable with my voice and well trying to get more comfortable with it and i thought i'd give a crack at putting my own vocals into the track so sat down wrote some lyrics and really tried to give it my all in terms of reinforcing the mood for this track and trying to like establish the theme throughout words and such so let's listen to this one without processing Okay, it's pitched up. Um, let me find one that isn't pitched up. When I was by your side, I could come. All right, here we go. So, 
for people that may not be comfortable with their voice, it's a very hard thing to overcome um, because almost everyone, I reckon, unless you are a trained professional and you, you have people telling you that your natural voice is amazing, you, you won't feel comfortable listening to yourself sing and such. And I really want people to understand that you can do wonders with your voice and you just don't know it. So let's listen to the original vocal here. When I was by your side, I could come out alive, yeah. Now you're gone, you're elsewhere. It's mediocre. It's not horrible. But at least, you know, it's sticking to pitch and stuff. And that's something you can sing a vocal multiple times and you will get it even if you're not proficient on the first try. You can really just do vocal practices and such, uh, like singing, trying to get perfect pitch and sing notes. Um, but so from this sample, let's now head to the mixer and have a look at the processing I put on it. When I was by your side. All right, so we're here in the mixer. And the tracks we're looking at are 27 and 28. So again, to start, we've got an auto pitch. Basically, um, I'll turn this on, but I'll just turn them on one by one. When I was by your side. When I was by your side, when I was by your side, I could come out alive. So the first thing I did was used auto pitch to um, get it swinging to the right keys. So this isn't, it is an auto tune, but it's not going to, unless you have the right settings, it's not going to slam you to the right key like a normal auto pitch would. I kind of have it in a sense that it's like, pulling towards the right key but if it doesn't reach there by the time the next syllable happens you know it doesn't try to it's not like an instantaneous thing the speed's very slow and it's kind of like guiding it slowly throughout it it doesn't have any form and shifting on this one the next is a compressor which for some reason makes it extremely quiet that makes it even quieter i'm concerned what i did with this Wow, this is extremely quiet. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, but okay, so that auto pitch has form and shifting. So this one is form and shifted down five semitones. And I think I use the Dimension Expander to bring width back into it. Wave Shaper to bring up the volume again. Charm Verb, which is probably my favorite reverb outside of Convolution. Uh, it can go up to, I think, 80,000 milliseconds. It's an, like, if you wanted a drone, like a, a backing noise, put a sample in, put Charm Verb on at full, and you literally have it going for a few minutes. So you can see, even with that vocal we had, reinforcing the pitch in the beginning, adding a lot to just bring up the volume and such. I think a few of those Maximuses, I didn't really explain what they were, but I'm using those as noise gates, I believe, because my room's quite noisy with a uh, tower computer. It's got the fans running. So I believe that's just cutting out noise. Um, and a little bit of just um, EQ correction, trying to get those uh, the syllables right. I only just got Isotope Nectar after making this song, and it's been a massive help with its AI improvement. This is not sponsored endorsement, but if you want to work with vocals, I definitely recommend using Nectar as well. It's really good at just uh, using AI to clean up vocals. So what each of these are here, recently I've been, um, recently I've been singing different keys and actually harmonizing properly, but these are just the different harmonic keys for the track.
And together they just make up that chorus happening. Now, in a sense, this is a copy-paste drop, but it is the seventh note up, I believe, or the ninth. Um, but basically, the every single track has been put up seven semitones, so it is different in a sense as well as I think it's shifted across the pattern. I wouldn't know how to explain my own track. I'm that brain dead at this point. I think it's 3 a.m. in the morning, but... <laughs> It is that pitch higher. Now what is different in this drop is the midsection which has the vocals coming in and out. Now this right here is one of my favorite plugins I only found quite recently. Um, it's a DeBlue plugin, that's the name of the creators. They do a tape stop, a glitch, um, this thing which is i think called stretch and basically it just takes grain size it's kind of like a granulator or a gra like granul granular synthesis grain synthesis um and it just takes that sample bite and stretches it out you've probably heard it in a few tracks i think must i used it once or something like that in the beginning of a track <laughs> So no new sounds here are introduced, but again, it's just using the tools that I have with me. It's the main melody, just in a different pattern. And then, yeah, the clicking noise is not playing like the rhythm anymore. It's just playing quarter notes. I've also got the reverb swells coming in a lot harsher, like bringing in and then just cutting out suddenly. With that there leading us into the last B section. I also apologize, I didn't realize I was on mix of view for the last probably two minutes. I'll try and recap just visually what I was explaining. Uh, just going back to the vocals. These ones here, like I was saying, these are just the different harmonies that I was creating uh, leading into the drop. And then this bit with the glitch. It's just the stretched out vocal. A very random Sultan effects that I think is stretched to hell. And uh, I think the main synth doing something. Yeah, so sort of a premonition into this midsection um, because that's the pluck that's playing on the every second, sorry, every third and fourth bar. Um, just a little premonition.
Well, well, thank you all for coming. Um, I hope you all enjoyed that like, and got a sort of thorough look into my processes and such. Um, it was quite a long one, half an hour, unless I do cut it down. That's how long I've been recording for. Um, yeah, I hope there's a few takeaways. Uh, most importantly, auto pitch, use it. Um, but last words, um, go check out Full Flex, their Abandoned Wear compilation. There's a lot of amazing artists on there and some amazing music as well. But anyways, that's all for now. <laughs> all for now. And I hope you enjoy your day. Toodles.